Hi everybody, I've just paid £126 for this solid silver cigarette case from 1946. That's its scrap value. I'm going to put it online in an auction on eBay. 99 pence start for one week to see how much money I can make or not as the case may be. So you will discover just how easy or not it is to make money buying and selling silver. So the first thing we need to do is prepare it, clean it up, ready for sale. Here we go. I mean, take a look at that. It is seriously manky, it hasn't been cleaned for generations. Good quality though, and in really good condition. Engine turned, it's been monogrammed here, but that's okay. No dints, no dents, which is always a good sign with silver. Bear in mind, silver is a very soft metal. So, prior preparation prevents cock-ups. Remember that. So we're just going to use some very simple cleaning methods. Get some good old silvo. So take a good look at this thing now, because I'm hoping the next couple of minutes it will be transformed. What I need is elbow grease. And you can see immediately the dirt is lifting. But look at that. I mean, seriously, if you've got some silver, just keep it clean. But watch out, don't overclean silver, especially around hallmarks, because again, with it being so soft, you're going to rub those hallmarks away, and that can kill the value. And as for value, for improving value, you don't have to make silver absolutely pristine. You can just prepare it to a point where it just looks an awful lot better. So what I'm going to do, what's that? Hardly any time at all. Just give that a buff off. You see, already it's improving. Improving dramatically. Now this area here is heavily stained. So what I'm going to do is introduce to you a toothbrush, yes, a toothbrush. Don't you just love the antiques business for being so very simple? Loads of silver on there. Again, it's lifting the dirt brilliantly. Gonna get the brush in. Filthy. Leave that for a bit, do the other side. Again, just to reiterate, you really don't need to overclean these things. They just need to make them look better. Top tip, let me open up the case. You'll see on the inside here, that is a gilded case. So it's solid silver with a gold plating. You can see where it's been rubbed and worn a little bit following the original little elasticated strap which would hold the cigarettes in. There are the hallmarks, absolutely crisp and clear. And as I've said so many times before, British hallmarks are so easy to read, it is unbelievable. So I know this thing was made in Birmingham in 1946 by E.J. Hulston. They were on Caroline Street in Birmingham and they were trading from 1903 to 1963. Great information and this is all stuff that I'm going to put in the advert. Right, okay, leave that to dry just for a second or two before I buff it. It really only does take a couple of minutes to vastly improve something and get it ready for sale. But remember the top antique trade tip don't overclean silver. Leave a little bit of work for the next person. It's a funny quirk in the world of antiques. People like to find something that they can improve if they want to. So what I'm doing here is just highlighting the outside edge. I'm not going to touch the gilding. Top trade tip, don't polish gold gilding. You'll just rub it away. Simply give it a little bit of a dust. Don't put any cleaning materials on it. Part of the joy of this thing is the gilding is in great order. That's part of its value. And that's it. 
It's been cleaned. Well, cleaned enough to get it online looking much better than it did a couple of minutes ago. So the idea now is to try and sell it for more than its scrap value. I've got to tell you that the antiques business is pretty ruthless when it comes to silver and gold because it's worth 126 quid. That's what it's worth. But now I need to add on that intrinsic value, write a good description and take good photographs. eBay allow you to put 12 pictures up. So for goodness sake, take 12 pictures, even if they look a bit duplicated. It doesn't matter. Pictures sell. So here we go. 12 pictures in a matter of a couple of minutes. Right, well, here we go. Get as artistic as you like, but don't muck around. Don't take absolutely for ages. There are better things to do in life. So concentrate on all angles. So the hinges here are in absolutely mint condition. The photograph will show that. The body, as I've mentioned, is engine turned. So get nice tight shots right into that engine turning there. The interior of the gilding is in really good order. So we're going to get nice and tight into that. We're going to focus on the monogram here, which is really rather nice. And if you're called Henry Terry Stevenson, you're in luck. So let's show that gilded interior in all its glory. What about the hallmarks? Hallmarks are so crisp. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to get into them nice and tight. And then anybody with a hallmark book can read that that was made in 1946. The strap itself is, as we've discovered, original. So get a good, nice, tight shot on that. So how many is that? Let's count your pictures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight pictures. I can, as you know, take 12. So just be a bit arty, just to stand here for cards. Plunk it there. Again, if you're duplicating, it really doesn't matter. Remember, pictures sell. Don't forget to focus in on any damage. So this area here is a bit grotty. Show it. Otherwise, people, being people, will complain. Two more shots. Maybe something a bit more arty. A bit of an angle shot like that would be good. One. Two. That's it. Let's write an advert, set it away. And like everything in life, love, war, business, selling on eBay, it's all about timing. Look at that, just after 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. This is crucial. I'm listing it now. And so that means it will sell in seven days' time and the listing will end just after 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. That's good news. Everybody's up at 10 a.m., well, most people on a Sunday morning to finish the auction. Here's the pictures. Remember, 12 pictures, even if they're a bit duplicated, doesn't matter. There is the hallmarks. Now, zoom in, anybody with a hallmark book will be able to read the date and who made it. Now, the advert itself is very clear, precise, professional and friendly. This is crucial. Don't rub it on. Don't give them information they don't need. Just give them facts and figures, measurements, weights, all of that kind of thing. And always say, if you've got any questions, do get in touch. And for goodness sake, check your spelling. Bad spelling puts people off from bidding. So that's it. Now we wait for the bids. I'll give you updates throughout the week. I love this bit. No matter how many times I do it, you can't help checking your computer looking for bids. And when they come in, there they are. It's exciting. Six bids, couple of days in, it's doing well. Then it stopped for a while. Now we're about a day away and it's only at £82. So currently I'm looking at a big loss. However, with eBay, it all happens in the final seconds. Get ready. 
And with just a couple of minutes to go, the bidding has leapt to... Look at that, £105. Right, here comes the final minute. I'm going to sit down with you. Forgive the wobbliness on the camera. Here we go. I'll get oh, there's Homer, if you're interested, on the right-hand side. Marble bust of Homer. He hasn't been much of a help so far. Still stuck at 105, 40-odd seconds left to go. Now, it really does normally happen right in the final few seconds on eBay. I've sold things on eBay, stuck at, say, 100 quid. And in the last few seconds, it can double in price. So I don't know about you, but I'm getting a bit nervous and anxious here. I could do with a little bit of activity. Just somebody, maybe an amateur at home, trying a bid, final few seconds. All happen on 10 seconds, I reckon. Here we go, counting down. Come on. Oh my goodness me. No, please. No. No. <laughs> no more bids. That is a disaster. 20 quid loss. I'm charging him a fiver for delivery. But that was pretty useless. Homer, what on earth do you think about that? Not much. I don't even know why I'm laughing. It must be just nerves or something. That was absolutely horrifying. 20 quid loss, plus eBay commission, another tenner or so, 30 quid down, plus all my time and effort. What a shocker. But this is nothing new. You make money in the antiques business, you could easily lose money as well. So I don't really mind. I've thoroughly enjoyed making the video. It's been really good fun. I hope you've enjoyed it too. So keep coming back to my YouTube channel here and I promise you I will show you trade secrets on how you can make money buying and selling antiques. I'm David Harper. Until next time, cheerio.